Welcome to the Soil Science Australia videos on identifying soils using field techniques. In this video we're going to cover off on looking at the impact of sodium on soils. So we can look at that in two ways. So on a soil test you'll quite often see salinity as a measure or the EC which was the electrical conductivity which can be represented as an EC 1 to 5 or an EC saturated extract or EC SE. So with that quite commonly uh, soils can be measured for their salinity by making a one part uh, soil to five parts water, shake that up and assess the salinity or the salt content of that solution uh, of that tested soil. With that we can understand how much salt is in that soil which we want to know because different plants have different tolerances to how um, how much salt content is in those soils and will also have a negative impact on the soil biological activity in the soil as well. Another measure in a soil which often gets confused with salinity is sodicity. So sodicity is when there's high sodium, not necessarily high chlorides as well, which is when you've got high sodium and high chlorides, it's high salinity, but when it's just high sodium, it is called sodicity. So with that, sodicity has a, can have a negative impact on the soil structure. So how that soil wants to hold together or break apart. So critically, how we test that in the field is you want to get some of your soil from the different layers and put that into some water and see how that soil behaves. So quite simply, I've gone in and grabbed the four layers, samples from the four layers in this soil profile, and we just need a pea-sized um, aggregate of the soil to drop into deionized water, reverse osmosis water, and if you are at home, use rainwater, just please don't use tap water because again the salts have an impact on how these, um, these soils will behave. So make sure you get pure water um, to then drop these particles in. So what we'll be testing for today is seeing again how the soil particles will break apart in two stages. One will be slaking and one will be dispersion. So what we want to do is grab a pea-sized particle of the soil, this is the top soil, drop it into the soil, you want it to be submerged, then we go down, grab the second layer, drop that in, and then we get the third layer, drop that in, and then we'll get some of this fourth layer as well, and drop that in. We'll do the same thing again in another Petri dish, set up exactly the same, this one with RO, reverse osmosis water, um, or deionized water, whichever you've got at hand, or like I said, the rain water is another option. Drop these particles in there, place them in there, and see how they behave. So over here we'll look at the slaking initially. So what we wanted to see is when we've put that soil, that pea-sized aggregate of soil uh, in the water, we ideally actually want these soils to hold together. We don't want them to break apart. But as we can see, this top soil, which generally has more organic matter, is actually holding together quite nicely. This second layer, we can see it's relatively well intact, but there is some particles that have sloughed off and, and are around the base of that aggregate. This next layer down, we can actually see the little particles falling off the initial pea-sized aggregate we put in there. So that is what we call slaking. So as those, that soil particle is sitting in that water, the air's been pushed out as the water's going in and actually forcing that soil particle apart and then it all collapses. And that is a great indicator where sodium might be uh, increasing down through the profile. And then we go to that fourth layer down and that has all lost its all of its integrity of that initial pea size structure we put in there. So that sample down the bottom has completely slaked. So with that, that is an element of how this soil will behave in the field under contact with water. So slaking is that initial stage, and then what we want to do is leave this other sample for a bit longer to see what will occur uh, when it's left to potentially disperse. So dispersion is when the little fine clay particles will then come up and cloud the water, kind of like muddy water in a dam, and that is a really good indicator of, of a sodic soil. So using these quite simple techniques we can get a great indication of what is going on and if we're going to have a problem um, down through the profile. This is a simple field assessment of doing this sodicity measurements in the field. What you can also do to assess if you've got a sodic soil is to send this soil sample off to a laboratory 
and there's a great opportunity to do these four layers to assess is this sodium increasing down through the pro profile and then when we get that soil data back we want to look at the what's called the exchangeable cations so the calcium magnesium sodium and potassium that's in that soil profile and then if that sodium comes back at greater than six percent of that total um, cation pool that's tested in that soil then we would be classifying that soil as sodic and you should be looking at a remedy strategy uh, remediation strategy such as gypsum to start identify, uh, managing those constraints through the profile. So to learn more on sedicity and salinity please head to soilscienceaustralia.org.au